Hey, hey, crafty friends. Happy Saturday. I am Beth Roy, an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And let's just do a little housekeeping before we get going this morning and let the notifications go out that I've gone live. checking here. I'm probably shaking the camera a little bit. So today, while we're waiting just a bit, if you pop in, say good morning. If you watch the replay, just type replay and say hello. If you're brand new to watching me live, uh, let me know where you're coming from, where you're watching from. There we go. Okay. All right. So, um, I am going to, uh, give a couple choices today, but I've made some of the choices for you. I know normally we do a lot of choices, um, but this morning I'm on a little time constraint. So I've made some, some de decisions ahead of time. <clears throat> so we'll just let everyone find me here for real quick for a second, because I know, uh, some things have changed around on Facebook and um how we view things and which profile if you if you're like me and you have a small business um sometimes you don't know which profile you're on so i'm just going to give it a couple seconds here and hopefully some people will pop in so i love fall um i love all the seasons really uh winter's probably my least favorite uh, just because I don't like ice <laughs> or driving on it. I'm fine with looking at snow and enjoying the beautiful aspects of it. But I'm not real um, excited when I have to drive <clears throat> through bad weather. But I love fall because of all the wonderful colors that pop. And we have lots of trees around us. So we have some really bright yellows. I noticed our walnut trees are really bright yellow. Our maples are an orange and a little darker yellow. And then I also have sassafras trees. Um, I have one that it must be literally be hundreds of years old because it's so tall. Uh, but they are a deep, dark maroon color. And I just love it. I know the leaves fall off. They can be a pain. Um, but I like to look at all the positives versus things you might not like. <laughs> so, but I love all those vibrant colors and it is a time to reflect and be thankful in the U.S. We celebrate Thanksgiving in November. And while I don't know that I celebrate the traditional <clears throat> meaning of Thanksgiving, we do use it as a time to be with our families and um, have good food, socialize, catch up. Some of our family doesn't live near us. And uh, I'd like to take that time to just be thankful for everything. My friends, my family, um, near and far. And so today I want to do... A thankful card or grateful or that's the theme so I don't really do Thanksgiving um, I don't really send cards for Thanksgiving um, you certainly could that's just not something that I've really done um, I have made treats for Thanksgiving I like to make little treat boxes with surprises on the inside and Stampin Up has had um, some paper pumpkin kits in the past with things like that. Um, so I do have some paper pumpkin stamps that say Happy Thanksgiving, and I can always pull those out. Um, but I don't actually buy Thanksgiving stamps. Now, some of them in the past, and I know there's, um, I left my catalogs upstairs. I might have to grab a different one. I know there's a pheasant one. Um, last year, I think we had a turkey, and some of those stamps do have happy Thanksgiving if you're wanting to make actual Thanksgiving cards or treats. Um, but I usually collect those for the images because my husband's a hunter and I like those images, the pheasant, the turkey, 
Um, one year we even had a rooster. I think it was a celebration set, but I loved it. So I do collect those and keep those even when they retire uh, and I still use them. So if you pop in, say good morning. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and get moving. I'm not Hopefully I'm coming through okay. Um, if you pop in, say good morning, say hi. Um, I do have some choices. I'm not sure where um, where everyone is. I hope my notifications went out. So, um, But I made this card earlier this week and I've been um, watching some videos by a lady named Jill Foster and her channel is called PB&J. And she uses, she doesn't use Stampin' Up! Um, but she does a lot of scenic stamping and I've really enjoyed that. And I do love stamping scenes and we have lots of Stampin' Up! stamps, retired and current, that you could use to build a scene. So this was a fall one that I created and she does, does this on a lot of her cards. So here's my um, area that I stamped and then she puts a layer on top to kind of showcase or focus on an area. And so I really liked that. So we can do a card similar to this today, which is a little more in depth. Um, it does have some die cutting, or we can keep it really, really simple, which was my original plan. And I'm gonna be using the uh, very vanilla note cards. Um, if you're just beginning uh, to make cards. The note cards are a wonderful way to kind of dive into that and make a little bit smaller cards. So they come in a pack of 20 with envelopes and they're already pre-scored. So you can see it's scored. And when it's folded, this is three and a half by five. These are mailable in the U.S. It's the small, smallest mailable size. Uh, for a regular stamp. So that's nice because there's no extra postage. Now, if you add a ton of layers and embellishments and things like that, you may get into um, the extra postage that requires it to be hand stamped and not machinable. And so that is an extra cost and that's something to think about. But if you're a beginner and you just wanna add in uh, maybe your favorite um, cardstock and then a layer, you can get away with very little supplies and make some awesome cards using the note cards as a base. So if you pop in, say good morning. Um, I know it's it's a little slow, but I, I have two choices for you. So either one's gonna be a note card. We're gonna adapt this to fit the note card size. And I pulled out some of my favorite retired stamps. Good morning, Jenny. Thanks for joining us. I think it's just one of those days. I didn't sleep well. I had a horrible migraine. I was up at one in the morning. And um, so I totally understand that. So I do have a color scheme for each card. And you're going to pick what we're going to do this, this morning. So there, there is one that's a little more in depth, a little more advanced. And then I have a really simple one. So this one, I pulled out one of my favorite fall sets we had several years ago called Country Home. I love the pitcher and the jug, and then you can stamp whichever flowers you want um, in each one. And I usually, lo I love this one with cotton, and I'm not sure what these things are. So if someone knows, type that in, but I know this is supposed to be cotton. And I just love these sayings. Um, so you, you can make a grateful card. Um, you can say happy harvest blessings, like a Thanksgiving card, and you can just say this one too. I This is probably one of my most used. Then I pulled out a an old paper pumpkin, because if you're a paper pumpkin subscriber, then you have these on hand, use them. You don't have to continually buy new stamps. Um, just uh, change it up. So this could be um, a fall set. We could color this with fall colors. Um, this is nice, grateful for family like you or thankful for friends like you. And this one also has Happy Thanksgiving. So we could make any type of card that we want. Um, this was, I, I want to say, these were bags that we did one year. It was, um, it was a paper pumpkin kit that had little gift bags for treats. 
or gifts that you would set at your Thanksgiving table um, or fall or any time. So this was a, an old paper pumpkin. And so I like to get these out and use them. We've paid for them. They're exclusive. You can't buy them uh, once it's gone, once the paper pumpkin is sold out or um, it retires the month after um, because it's a subscription. So these are exclusive, but we can stamp this very simple image so you can use whatever ink color you have. If you have just a neutral ink color, a gray or a brown or even black, you could stamp that. And then I have a color scheme over here. Surprise. If you know me, you're not really surprised at this color scheme. Um, so I have picked Bermuda Bay, Cajun Craze and Pumpkin Pie um, because I love the complementary colors of teal and orange. So those are really great colors to use together when you want your colors to pop. Um, so I was thinking we would either stamp this very simple image and then one of our greetings and I have some layers here. So I have my note card and when it's folded, it's three and a half by five. So I've actually cut this, I believe it's four and a half by three and this is four and a fourth by two and three four. So I, I left a wider border of my card base. And or we can stamp the jug and and this. And it and this will be really fill it up. And then we can always um, stamp right over top of our jug image. Or we could just stamp the inside. You don't always have to put a greeting on the outside. So we have this card. Or we have this card. And what I'm going to do is I use Mountain Air on this, but I was going to use the Beauty of Friendship and these trees from Grassy Grove. And then the greeting that I used on this is actually from Lovely You, Wildly Grateful. So this is a great time to use that greeting. So if we do this, I have this already pre-cut. And it will just go on to the note card. Um, and the layers are the same size because we're going to have that peekaboo window. Um, so what do you guys want to do? Do you want to do something a little more complex? Like a scene? Or would you like to keep it really, really simple and, and basic? You still with me, Jenny? I think there's a few people on that haven't um, haven't really said that they're watching, and that's okay. Um, I'm fine with if you um, just want to hang hang in there and and um, and just watch from afar. I hope someday that you'll you'll jump in with us and have a little bit of fun and and make some of those choices. Which theme, Jenny? The the stampscape or the very simple or scene? Let's do that because I'm not sure which which one you mean. <laughs> My original plan was the simple one. But then I thought, well, I, I got into this scene stuff and I thought, well, I might share that with you too. I don't want to um, scare you away if you're a beginner. Uh, you certainly don't need die cuts and all of those things. Um, but it is a fun way to step up your card. <laughs> Good morning uh, to your doggy. <laughs> nosy rosy <laughs> so my choice is simple we're going to do a little coloring with blends if you don't have blends you could use um we do have these colors in the watercolor pencils and we also have them in the stamp and write marker so very simple one of these stamp sets and a very simple stamped layer um with a thankful card or happy thanksgiving or the more complex with a die cut. So 
very simple, simple stamping, a little bit of coloring, or um, stamping a scene with a die cut on top. And if you're watching the replay and you didn't get to be involved in some of the choices, feel free to still comment and let me know. And I am working on my video schedule. So this will, some of these will eventually be videos as well. Good morning, Tracy. Thanks for joining us. We are just making choices on what card we're gonna make today. Um, and I had a very complex card, not very complex. It, it's really simple, but it has a lot more steps. Uh, in my opinion, even a beginner can do this as long as you are able to die cut or or do some kind of punch. Um, and then my color scheme for that is, um, my color scheme for this one, I guess I should have showed that, is creme cake, balmy blue, pumpkin pie, crushed curry, and Mary Merlot. Typical fall colors in my mind. And then I have this simple one um, because last week we did a paper pumpkin and I wanted to show you that you can pull out um, these paper pumpkin stamps you've been collecting and use them all, all the time. You don't just have to use them for that specific paper pumpkin and then, you know, toss them in your closet and never see them again. I have mine in a crate and I, I bought these envelopes on Amazon. Jenny actually turned me on to these um, envelopes. And um, in the Paper Pumpkin Fan Club, a lady does uh, these. Um, they're actually as a, she, she made them as a inventory guide of what stamp sets went with which month. And I just printed them off and cut them with my trimmer and placed them in the, in the envelope. So I have this one, and then I have this retired one because it's my favorite, and if you've bought a stamp set and it's your favorite, then you should continue to use it. Um, just because Stampin' Up's not selling it anymore doesn't mean that you don't have to, you know, get rid of it and move on. Um, I keep all my favorites. I keep all the sets that have animals and birds, especially um, that I can use for guy cards. I keep all of those sets um, to use whenever I want, so... I also wanted to bring these out just to show that you can use those retired things and make cards. I love this country home set. It's probably, it was probably one of my most used sets. I did a lot of cards with this set um, it, it, when it was current and even now, I love this set. So here's my color scheme for this card. So I just, what do you think? Do you wanna use the paper pumpkin set or, and we can combine, if you like these greetings, we can use those with the set. Or do you wanna do like um, a picture with the cotton in it? What do you guys think? And then I'm just doing a note card. So I'm making it really simple. I, I have a Cajun craze piece because that's, um, the darker color that I really want to focus on. And then I have a very vanilla sheet. So I've, these are packs of paper. This uh, comes in a big pack. You, you can use it for a while, uh, depending on if you're making card bases or just layers. And um, the colored cardstock you can buy in color families, or you if you know you're going to love a color, you could buy a full pack of just that color. Uh, and I made a layer that's going to go onto my very vanilla note card. So I like making note cards. I just, um, when I want to write quick messages, I just feel like the note card is a great size. Um, and I use these a lot for thank yous or card sets. So they're a great value. You get 20 in a pack with envelopes that fit. So you're all ready to go. You could even simple stamp on this. Now, if you're coloring, coloring with blends, it will bleed through. That's why I like to do a couple layers, is I just don't love when the blends come through on the other side. So, I may pull in a couple other colors. Oh, look, mine's not even. <laughs> I'm going to clean the back over here. Mine's not even stuck to the case.
So I love this image with the cotton and I don't know, maybe you know, Tracy, you, got, you guys know I'm not a gardener, so I'm not sure what these things are, these little, I don't know, it almost looks like a honeycomb, but I know it's some sort of flower, but if you know, tell us so we can know too. <laughs> and if somebody watches later, make sure you comment because I just don't know that much about plants. So we do have this big milk jug, um, which I, I love coloring this. It's been a while, so be patient with me today if, I, if it doesn't come out very perfect. Um, and then we also have this picture. Now, we do have this image too, which the, with the cattails and I think an artichoke, but because I'm trying to use such a limited color scheme, I'm not sure how that would look. We could try that one. So there's lots of leaves and then there's these little leaves and some bear. I'm, I'm going to assume those are berries. And then the cattails. Oh, that's okay, Tracy. Um, I know that Facebook has been weird lately, so I'm sorry. Um, if something happens with this, I... I'm not sure what to do if Facebook <laughs> if Facebook keeps changing things because it's kind of hard to keep up. So I'm thinking this image, and you can see how much I've used them. They're very stained. And I also love that it has thanks, love, and joy, and hello. And it goes on this little tag right here. So you can actually stamp that right onto the milk jug and you could say hello on it and then put your greeting on the inside. So that's something to think about before we start coloring. I'm going to move these off for just a second. Oh, that's not going to show up over the red, is it? So we've got this option, the milk jug or the pitcher. The pitcher is a little bit shorter. And I did pull out Cajun Craze, but I can stamp it in something else as well. We could stamp it in, I have crumb cake up here. We could stamp it in crumb cake. So the, the trick to this is getting it to fit onto your note card. So you would stamp one and then layer the other. So we could do the pitcher or the milk jug. And so that gives you an idea that this takes up a lot more space. So our greeting could go on the inside. I love the milk jug too, Tracy. That was, this is seriously was one of my favorite stamps and it had, it was a suite at one point. So it had matching paper and um, I actually just got rid of, I had a little bit of that paper left and I gave it to one of my friends and um so that she could use it up. But it was such a gorgeous, gorgeous set. And I'm drinking my coffee out of my thankful coffee cup this morning. Okay, so now that we have the milk jug, do we want this little tag down here and uh, stamp it with like hello or something? Um, or we can stamp, after we're done coloring, we can take, uh, I love this saying, happy harvest blessings. We can stamp this right across our milk jug after we're done coloring in a dark color. And I do have my Stamparatus here because I want to be able to um, line everything up. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to line things up on the Stamparatus. I'll put these off to the side. And we can also use one of these greetings as well, if you want it to say Happy Thanksgiving. Um, we can do that. Good morning, Dad. Thanks for joining us. So do we want to stamp in Cajun Craze or do we want to stamp our outline images in the crumb cake so that when we color, it's a little... Um, it's a little bolder. Cajun Craze is going to be very dark. I'm also grabbing I'm also 
also grabbing a couple browns. I like to patina <laughs> my milk jug. So I grabbed bronze, which originally when I always colored this, we didn't have the browns, we didn't have the natural tones. And I grabbed the natural tone 500. Just, I like that caramely color. So I'm gonna add a couple browns in there. So those are my neutrals. Here's my color scheme. Jenny votes for the Happy Harvest. And like I said, if we, we can stamp it across the jug or we can leave just the image on the front. It doesn't have to have words on the front and we could just stamp it on the inside. So I'm gonna grab my Stamparatus here and I have one plate attached. You can see I've done a lot of stamping and lining up words. <laughs> so you can buy these sheets. Um, they come in a pack. They're seven by seven grid paper sheets that fit your Stamparatus. Uh, because we are using the photopolymer, I will wanna have my mat in there. And so, yeah. I tend to stamp this up a lot before I get a new piece. Uh, photopolymer stamps are very, very sticky. So I'm trying to figure out how I want to stamp it. So I'm kind of away from this hinge and it's really hard when you're working with a small piece, but that's okay. I'm gonna stamp it kind of sideways and I want this into the corner. And we'll stamp one thing at a time. So what do you guys think? Crumb cake for the outline? And these are very sticky stamps. So it is going to pull up a little bit. That's why I try to do straight into the corner. And I'm not concerned if it's perfect. So, um... So you could just say brown or orange if you want to simplify the uh, outline. I'm gonna grab one more thing while I'm waiting. I wanna bring my color lifter over. I use my color lifter a ton. I know some people don't. <laughs> John Deere Green, Dad. Um, I would love to use that color. Um, I think in our Stampin' Up! world, that would probably be maybe Garden Green. Um, but I'm doing fall, so <laughs> green's not in, in there. <laughs> you would pick John Deere Green for everything. <laughs> Tracy, that was my initial thought, too, was Cajun Craze. Um, and I'm coloring, I'm gonna be coloring, so just so that you guys can um, come along on what's in my head, <laughs> is I'm thinking I'm gonna color my jug with this teal color. And then my, up here, my, let me grab this so you can see the image. My flowers, or whatever these things are, are going to be, Cajun craze and maybe some and we're going to do some pumpkin pie in there too and then any leaves we have I'm actually going to use the light Bermuda Bay so what do you guys think about that <laughs> Ford blue dad I could use that color I use that color all the time <laughs> that would be Pacific Point in the Stampin Up world Ford blue Hey, Vicki, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Yes, my dad only speaks in masculine colors. <laughs> Those known to every man and, and some women if you've grown up around <laughs> Ford and John Deere lovers. <laughs> So, Vicki, we're just having all kinds of decisions this morning. And you know, 
that would bring in the Cajun craze a little bit more since I'm not coloring as much. Okay, let's do it. Everybody on board with Cajun craze? We'll try it. Worst case scenario is we don't use it next time, right? <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Vicki, we're using one of your favorite sets. Okay, so I've inked it with Cajun Craze. Dad, what would you call call this cup? <laughs> what would you call this color? Does this does this fit in any of the uh Tractor Worlds or or your cars? I know, Jenny. Worst case is we stamp it and we think, eh, I don't really love that, and we turn it over before we start coloring. Because if you're coloring with blends, you can't really turn it over because it bleeds through. Okay, so I'm going to put this here. So I've stamped my jug, and I'm lining these up. Thank goodness for photopolymer stamps. And I'm lining that up right with that line on my, on my milk jug. I'm going to put my magnet on here. I'm going to flip. This is the best thing about the Stamparatus. I took my plate out and I flipped it over. Now I'm going to pick up that other piece. So if I wanted to make a whole set of cards, I can just leave my stamps on my Stamparatus and just put a new piece of paper in and stamp away. So I use this for lots of things. Every time I make a set of cards that I want to match, and I'm using my bone folder because this is really sticky, and my my magnet is holding my paper down, but my stamp doesn't want to come off. So I'm just taking my time, and I'm going to use my bone folder to help it along there. And it did pull it a little bit. I'm going to shove it back in the corner, and I'm just going to double check that I had it lined up okay. I'm going sideways because I want this to be furthest away from the hinge. So now if you have a ton of ink colors, you could stamp this in different colors. You could use a brown or whatever, but I'm trying to keep it pretty simple today. Ladies, my dad must have already exited. He's probably watching his show. <laughs> so we'll never know what color he would call this. I would call it burnt orange, but I'm just curious how it translates in his world of John Deere green and Ford blue. <laughs> okay. Oh, I think it moved just a tad. Let's see if I can line that back up. That's okay. So there's our stamped image. Whoops. <laughs> You're here. I thought maybe you abandoned us already. So there's our image and our little milk jug. Do you guys like it in Cajun Craze? Do you want me to try uh, molar rust? <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's a good one, Jenny. I thought he would call it a Chevy color, like Chevy, rusted Chevy. <laughs> did did autocorrect get you, Jenny? Mo, Mopar. So. What do you think? Do you want to try it in crumb cake or do we go forward with the Cajun craze? Thoughts? All right, Tracy, Tracy says she likes it. So just so, so you have an idea if you're, again, ooh, don't throw your stuff, but you could. Um, if you're 
a beginner stamper. I use these. These are our chamois. Um, they get hard when they dry out and you just stick them in the sink and re-wet them. And you can just dab your stamps oh, and wipe off any ink you've got on your plate. Oh, I missed that part. And you're just going to wipe them off. Now, I do have some of these that I cut in half so that I can hold them better and not get everything, touch everything. There we go. Touch everything with the wet thing. And I use a stamp case. Stampin' Up! sells these um, cling cases in a four pack. And I use one to put my chamois in so that when it's on my desk, I don't lay my project on it because trust me, that has happened. So I cleaned my stamps, they're all ready to go if I wanted to use another color. We're gonna bring that back in when we do our words. Let me close this. Yeah, I like this and this is kind of what I was thinking, but then you know, sometimes I second guess myself. So I'm gonna bring in a really yucky piece here just to protect this surface. Um, when I put my card together, I like to have my surface pretty clean. So now I'm just gonna start coloring. The colors are going to look different. Lotus pods, ooh. I do love whatever it is. I love that look. I just never know what it is. Um, and I'm probably going to color them all wrong, but I'm going to take some creative freedom here. I think, are they typically brown? Um, but I'm going to take some creative freedom and mine are going to be Cajun craze. Um, when you color on very vanilla, your colors are going to look a little different because it's a creamy color. So let's start with our milk jug here. And I do, I did bring in some of those browns because I want it to be patinaed a little, right? And I'm going to start with my dark and I'm just going to go in and start. Do you guys want me to pull it down so you can see me coloring? Or are you good with the way it is? I'm just kind of going around the outside and I'm doing little short strokes. And I like to do kind of a curved stroke. Oops, don't worry about that going outside the lines. I knew Vicki would know. <laughs> I am definitely not good with plants. My dad should know too, but he didn't answer, did he? Maybe he maybe he's being shy today. So I'm I'm kind of going in a whoops, a rounded motion. As you can see, nothing is coming out very perfect for me, but And then before I add on, I'm going to go in with some of this and it doesn't look like much right now, but I'm going to use some of this bronze up here. And you can dot it on, you can do whatever. I could spend hours just coloring this jug and having some fun with it but we're not gonna take hours today. And yes, I scribble.
Now this color I haven't really used in this way yet, but this is the Natural Tones 500. And I think it's a very similar brown to the bronze. Of course, I could get out my sheet, right? Don't forget your, if you've made your Stampin' Blends um, sheet with all your colors colored in. Now let's just go in. This is the light Bermuda Bay. And I'm just gonna start blending all those colors. And I can adjust them and go back in and add dark spots and, and whatever. And the beauty about the blends is that you see all these lines, but it just kind of dries and it looks so nice. So I'm gonna let that dry for a second and then I can go in and adjust. Um, when you're coloring with blends, you don't want to saturate your area too much because it will spread and then it will definitely go outside your lines. So that's what the back looks like. I've done a lot of layering um, and some blending already, so you can definitely see where I've layered that. That's why you want that piece under there. Now, I'm going to come in and do this. And I'm just using the dark Cajun craze on this. I'm trying to keep those holes. I'm trying not to color in that area. I almost thought about doing these in the Bermuda Bay, even though I know that's not the proper color. I just like the pop of color that I can add there. Hmm. Let me try the light. <laughs> Let me try the light on the other one. I feel like it covered up all my holes because it will spread. And I think the light Cajun craze actually looks like rust. There, I think I like the lighter one better. Let's see if I can... Lighten that dark up a little bit. It's okay if it's not perfect. We'll see as that develops. <clears throat> now I'm going to use... There are these little berries on here. I don't know what color they're supposed to be, but ours are going to be dark Bermuda Bay because that's what I like. And then I'm gonna use pumpkin pie. And I'm not sure if these are supposed to be leaves right here or if those are actually cotton pieces, but you can color them however you want. I've colored them lots of different ways. Um, I'm going to use on these little, on this little flower. And I've even seen these colored like they're this little flower. So again, take those liberties and color, color them however you want. Um, but I'm going to color this, the pumpkin pie. What do you guys think? Let's vote. Do you think these are cotton or should I color them like the flower? I'll let you guys answer. I'm just adding some dark pumpkin pie to that flower. So, get my little pointer here. 
these right here, do you want to vote that they're cotton? So right here. Or do you want to color them like the flower? I've done it both ways. I've even colored, colored them as leaves. Um, so these are leaves. And then we have these two circular things right here. And then there's some more leaves. And then these are cotton. So I'm not 100% sure if that's supposed to be a cotton piece or a flower. I've colored it both ways, and I've even colored it as a leaf before. So I guess it depends on the colors you're using and how you want to interpret that. Jenny says color it as the flower, which is what I would typically do. Um, but I think you could also interpret it as little pieces of cotton, short, you know, a short stem of cotton. So, We'll go with it as a flower. I have a couple votes, so we'll we'll go on with it. And it does help kind of balance out those colors that we've put on. And I'm just going to use a little... Oh, if this ever happens, this happens on my orange one a lot. I just put it back in there, and then I hold it squeeze it and pull the, the lid off. That's not actually supposed to come out, but I, I've broken mine or whatever. So I'm just adding in some dark around this a little bit. Vicky voted cotton. And I would say it definitely could be either. And sometimes I just use it as a space, as a flower to add color to, to balance that out a little bit. Now, what do you guys want to do for the leaves? Um, I had originally thought about doing this, that color. But we could also, this is that uh, 500 tone. We could also use this color and make it a brown leaf or a bronze leaf. And I'm going to go back in and start adjusting some of my tones on my Um, on my jug down here. Me too, Jenny. And it, you know what's funny though? My my pumpkin pie one does it. It feels like a lot more than my other colors. I don't know if it's because it's not used as often and or what, but I know it does happen. I'm just adding in some darker spots here. And I'm trying to add maybe some shape and, and depth to the curve here. Like I said, it's been a while since I've really colored this. So I'm just kind of scribbling and... and adding in. Yeah, I don't know if I've had my cherry cobbler do it. I guess I don't use that one very often either. Is that terrible? I have certain colors I definitely use all the time. I'm just trying, I'm taking that bronze in and I'm just trying to add in some maybe Patinaed areas. And I'm just dotting it on. I'm kind of trying to be kind of random. Trying to be. <laughs>
Beth the Scribbler. I, you know, that's me. <laughs> you guys probably aren't zoomed in enough to really see me, but now you know, I'm, I'm not this, um, skilled color. I'm a scribbler. And I'm just, I'm going back in with the light and just trying to blend all that out. I really, I really do scribble. Now, as you layer these colors, it is going to change how um, dark your jug is. Because as you keep layering colors, they're going to get darker. What do you guys think? So, did I see? I don't know if I saw any votes on the leaves. Brown or light Bermuda Bay? So, I have these three colors as contenders because we have a few leaves right here that we need to fill in. And I did the berries in the dark. Now, I do have the color lifter here. So I'm going to talk about this. If you wanted some highlights here, you can take this back in and create a little highlight where you've added all that color. Brown, brown. Okay. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate it. This is what I like to sit and do. And this was... I loved coloring this and I loved coloring the jugs and the pitcher and trying to, of course, I always used um, grays or teals, ironically. <laughs> I think mint macaron would be an excellent color as well if you like that minty green. So this set, if you have this set, get it out and play with it. If you have these old paper pumpkins, I don't know what this leaf is supposed to be, but I, I would have colored it um, pumpkin pie. And I had, um, I was thinking of pumpkin pie and then dots, you know, as the, the Bermuda Bay dots, like a dot coloring background. Um, that's what I was kind of thinking for that. And I still may make that card and show you later. We'll see what I have time for. Probably not today. Okay, so I see two votes for brown. Now I need light or dark. So light or dark. And remember, it's going to look a little bit different on the very vanilla. And so on this, I'm going to stamp, when we stamp over top of this, so I don't know if we voted on that, the Happy Harvest. Do we want it on the front where we can write a little message on the inside or do we want it on the inside only? I see a lot of lights, so I'm going to throw that over there. So when we stamp this, we're going to have to stamp it a few times because we're going right over top of Bermuda Bay, which is very dark. So I'm just... Um, now, this color does not have a light and a dark. You could come in with that bronze and use it for the shadow. But because we stamped in Cajun Craze, I just don't feel like I have to do that. I think it's fine on its own, the way it is. So you don't always have to be shading and you can just use them in color. And I love using these as a light and a dark just to have different colors. Like here, we just used the light pumpkin pie and I didn't try to do any shading. So there is our image. I love it. I love this color scheme. Okay, so this is going to go like this. Oh, and I wanted to show you, this is one of the reasons why I brought the color lift over. I'm going to use the lightest color that I had in the brown, and I'm going to go around this bottom here. You can do it however you want. You could even do some dot coloring if you don't like flicking. And then I'm going to use my color lifter and kind of lighten that a little bit and smooth that edge out. Just to ground our 
image a little bit. So it's just to ground our image. So here's our card so far. And you certainly could stamp some of these along the bottom on the inside of your card. Um, if you don't want, again, if you want to color that and you um, want to use blends, you could take a piece of very vanilla, which is the same color as our note card. And this is three and a quarter by four and three fourths. And so it's just a tad smaller than our note card when it's folded. And you could stamp this and glue it on the inside and color it if you wish or um, or just leave it um, whatever color you choose to stamp in and leave it uncolored, just an outline image. So that's how we are so far. Do we want this on the front or on the inside? And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna stamp in Cajun Craze just to keep with the uh, lined images we already uh, stamped. And I'm gonna use my Stamparatus so that I can stamp, ink and stamp repeatedly and really darken that so it shows up. I don't really know if it's gonna show up. Um, if it didn't, you could always stamp a scrap piece and make your greeting, you know, 3D. <laughs> because if you're cutting this, uh, very vanilla down, you're going to have strips of paper and you're going to have scraps that you can definitely use um, if you don't like how you stamp something to cover it up. So I'm going to take my images off my Stamparatus. This does come with two plates. I have one in use for a card I'm making, so I didn't want to take the stamps off of that. Um, but it does have two plates, so you actually have four surfaces to put stamps on. Um, so you could set up your stamps and leave them all set up and make lots of cards. And that's fine, Tracy. You know, that's um, that's totally understandable. I don't, I don't have a vanilla strip nearby, but I have one over in my pile. So if I stamp this and I hate it, I can stamp a strip and put it on like that. So if you are brave enough to attempt it and then you don't like it, you certainly can fix it. So don't think, oh my gosh, I hate it. I'm gonna have to throw my layer away. You just grab a strip um, or you could even, if you're really trying to do something advanced, you could even grab a strip of uh, Cajun Craze and heat emboss it. Um, of course, we don't have, van I don't think we have vanilla, very vanilla. I think we just have white. Um, but FYI, so that you know, you can color heat embossing with blends. So those are some options. If you were brave enough to try this, and I don't think it's going to show up well because I did our jug very dark. Now, if I had just used um, maybe light orange or something, the light pumpkin pie, it would be different, but we don't have to stamp the front. So if you try something like this and then you feel like it's a fail, don't worry, just stamp a strip and put, put your greeting up on some dimensionals over top of it and don't worry about it. So you guys wanna do inside? I'm gonna snag one of these from my other card and we're gonna stamp this inside. You could even stamp an outline of everything that we have on the front and just stamp words or we could stamp an empty milk jug with the words what do you guys think just words i'm going to start adhering these things so i'm just using liquid glue And if you want this more patina, you can go back in and keep adding light and dark. Just let the area dry first before you do that. So we can adhere this flat or we can get a little fancier and put it up on dimensionals. 
And since I'm not gonna put any words on the front, I think I'm gonna use dimensionals just to give it a little extra. I mean, we all like extra, don't we? Pop it up, you said it. <laughs> Dimensionals are fun, and they're for every, every level of crafter. Let's see if I can um, put it on straight when I'm not right over top of my project. <laughs> so there we go. There's the, our card. Beautiful image. This could be anything you want it to be, really. Um... Ooh, yes, I agree, Jenny. I That's kind of what I was thinking, too. I like this little image, and it doesn't have to be coming out of the thing. Let me show you. Let me get a block real quick. We're going to use the Stamparatus for our words. Don't lose your words. One of my favorite things about the stamp staining is being able to see them <laughs> so we can take this piece and you will want your mat if you don't have one of these pierce mats uh, stamp and pierce mats you can use that mat that came with your, your stamparatus but you just want something that has a little bit of give we're going to stamp off i'm going to see if i stamp off again and then we're just going to put this right down in the corner like that and it's very light, it does not have to compete. And if your message is really long, you can still write over top of it and your message will be visible. Thank you for the love. So as always, if you're watching, make sure you give me some love on my video and share with your friends, invite them to watch along with us. Um, I watch lots and lots of crafters, Stampin' Up! ladies, as well as other companies. There's so many ideas. I love uh, just seeing what other people do. So I'm going to put this in. Let's see, which way do I want to stamp it? I don't think it's going to matter. I'm going to come up against the hinge no matter what. Um, because this goes all the way across. You just have to push a little harder when you get there. So I'm going to put Happy Harvest Blessings up here towards the top. I'm not sure if I have it straight, but I'm going to show you what I do, which is why all these are stamped like that. I'm going to pick that up. I'm going to move this out of the way for a second. We're going to ink it up. Oh, why I'm I'm not even here. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my thing. I'm not very even. I think one of my feet are coming out of my stamparatus. Anyway, I'm gonna stamp this down on my grid paper. And no, I did not get that straight at all. Do you guys see the line? <laughs> so I'm gonna pull this off. And I'm going to get my head in here a little bit and attempt to get this straight. Sometimes I just mess up because like the harvest is a script and then I turn my paper around so I can get a new clean line. And I'm gonna stamp again. And it's not perfect, but it looks pretty good. You could keep trying for perfect. Okay, hold on just a second. This is really, really bothering me. I'm not sure why it's, <laughs> it's not level. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on with that, but we'll fix it later. I think the little, there's little things that help it not slip on the back. I think mine's coming out. 
So I've inked it in Cajun Craze. And when you get to this hinge, you might have to push a little bit harder. I do have my little Chucky tool over here. You can use that. So there we go. There's the inside of our card. I'm just gonna put that off to the side. Close this. So what do y'all think? You guys ready to make some note cards? Now I'm just gonna glue this flat. You could, you could cut it down a little bit and add a mat to match the outside. But I'm just going to glue this in here. This Having this layer, oops, that we stamped also kind of helps balance out the fact that we have a couple layers on the front. You could add embellishments. I don't tend to add them to the note cards just for mailing purposes. Um, I, um, I don't want mine to stick up too much. Oh, sorry about that hair is getting in the way. So there we go. Now, if you wanted to add embellishments, I do like to add them along where I have dimensionals because I feel like that helps balance it out. So you could add in something if you wanted to step it up. How many of you buy embellishments and never use them? Because that's what I do. Thank you, ladies. So we made, um, you know, it's as quick as you want it to be, depending on your coloring. Like I said, we have these colors in, except for the bronze and the natural tones, we have all of these colors in the watercolor pencils. So you could definitely do a softer look. And we do have early espresso, so you can add in a brown. That would be pretty as well. Um, and like I said, if you, you can color this and smooth it as much as you want. I like the rustic look. And there we have it. Happy Harvest Blessings. So if you don't celebrate traditional Thanksgiving, that would be a good phrase. And if you have this retired set, grab, get it out and play with it. I mean, we bought stamps to use them, right? <laughs> so it doesn't matter to me if your stamp set's retired or current. If you need a current set, there's there's a few things to choose from in the um, July to December mini catalog that has um, a grateful theme or a fall theme. Um, so thank you all for joining me today. If you need any Stampin' Up! products, you can always go to my Stampin' Up! online store at shop.stampandcreatewithbeth.com or I do have the link uh, saved pinned to the top of my page. You can get there that way as well. If you need any help figuring out what you need for your project, that's what I'm here for. Just shoot me a message and I'd be happy to help you um, see what you need and what you can use that you already have on hand. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Please give me some hearts on my video and share with your friends. And I will see you next Saturday with a Christmas kit. So we have lots of Christmas kits in our online store. Those kits can sell out and um, we do have a new kit. We have a new tag kit, but I am going to show you a really cute card set that we currently have in the online store. And kits make cards easy. So if you just want an easy project or you're a beginner and you wanna see if you, you know, wanna dip your toe into this and see if you like it, that's a great place to start. So thank you ladies and dad for joining me. And if you watch the replay, just let me know that you stopped by. Take care and have a wonderful weekend. Bye from Joe. Ha, 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 ha.